I think, and I could go on and on because this, this I could go with so many other things. Father, like you said, fatherlessness. I'm a huge pro-gun advocate. I think that it's a life-saving measure. I am like 100% pro-life, and I think that guns fit into that 100%. So um, yeah, but I think those those three topics in particular, because it's a multi-generational thing, right? And and if we're going to talk about politics, especially, I think the discussion around bipartisanship. People crave bipartisanship. Even people in the government of the United States and government of Canada, government of UK, they all get along great behind closed doors, but they're not going to show the public that because they want division, because in division, things crumble and they can resurrect that through their own power, their own agenda, right? So it's interesting to me with, with my previous boss, Br boss, Brad Trost, conservative as conservative can be. His own party didn't even like him. He was so conservative. But he was friends with Elizabeth May. He was friends with people in the NDP caucus, in the Liberal caucus. There was so much respect for Brad Trost in every other party that things got done. Things that nobody knows about. Influence was had because there was mutual respect and bipartisanship. And because they drank together. <laughs> well, Brad doesn't drink, but <laughs> they had breakfast so together. Still for beers, yeah. There you go. But it's it's just there's there's no discussion around it. It happens. The discussions happen when nobody else is looking or there's no cameras. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a conversation that needs to be had. And I think that young people need to hear it. You know, they say that kids on campus are are lean a certain way politically or even culturally because they're only taught one way of thinking from kindergarten until they graduate university or college. But when they're exposed to different ideas, they then have to question, what do they really believe? And the same thing happens when we're talking about all these, like all these conversations, right? That are happening. There's so many different, you're a free speecher, I'm a free speecher, you have a different take, I have a different take because you can speak freely, I can learn from you. But if you don't have that ability, I don't have the ability to learn. Same thing with what's happening in, in our culture, but that, that is heavily influenced by our education system. I could talk about unions. I could talk about, I could talk about anything and tell you that there's something fundamentally wrong in it. Um, but then again, that's because every human is flawed and not even I, Matea Murda, <laughs> am perfect. And uh, you know what, I think, I mean, this could go on forever, but I think the family needs to be put on a pedestal again. Think we're and, in the it? Or is it too far now? I'm an optimist. Everyone's rights, 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 rights. Nobody seems yeah. to be talking about responsibility. Personal exactly. Responsibility. So, so yes, I was just in Calgary, just in Calgary, talking to a young, a young dad, actually. And we were discussing um, abortion, actually. And how the religious institutions used to talk about either abstinence or the, the dignity of every human life. And that, that list could go on forever. But that's no longer prevalent within religious institutions, nor is it talked about in schools, nor is it talked about in society as, as well. It, it with the media or actually kind of any, any sphere of influence there is. And the one element that we kept coming back to was personal responsibility. Where is that in society? Where is that flourishing? Where is the conversation about it? Where is that being uplifted and praised? It's not. It's not. It's all about the victim mentality and how many groups you can belong to to be victimized. So I, th I like there. That's a great one that we could talk about probably for another hour or so on. Um, but especially when we talk about, uh, there's this huge thing going on with Black Lives Matter right now. I'm disturbed by it. And I think so many, I, I actually am grateful. I'm not grateful for what COVID has produced, but I am grateful that for the fact that it drew so many people's attention to some really significant things going on, like Black Lives Matter, how it is culturally Marxist how dangerous that is. They, they clearly state that they are a Marxist. They want to tear down the traditional family. Mm -hmm. They're, they've linked arms with pro-abortion groups. Radic like, these are radicals. They call, call us radicals. Mm 
look at Black Lives Matter. They're, they are all radical. I mean, for heaven's sake, they even have a convicted terrorist working in their fundraising arm. Like, that's, that's freakish. Um, and then we, we, we could look at so many different things. And at the end of the day, it all boils down to where's your heart at? It sounds cheesy. And people say that I'm ridiculous for pointing it out. But really, it's the hearts of men. Like, yeah, we have to win their, their heads, their intellect. But you have to touch their hearts because that's the gateway because whatever comes out of the heart, whatever comes out of your mouth comes out of your heart. And, and that is what is most impactful. And that's what's going to change not only a home structure, not only a community, but nations. When people start to have morality again, start to yeah, have values. We had such great leaders. Uh, you know, yeah. And Martin Luther King Jr. was way before my time. Amazing. Uh, and then you've got this dumbass putting on a Spike Lee impersonation the other day was Nick Cannon. Yeah. Like you, you can see him actually, be, he believes that he's MLK Jr. Yeah. And it's disturbing. And, you know, I, I wonder, like, how old are you? 24. 24. Oh, okay. You're an old soul because, I mean, uh, you don't look that much older, but you, you, you appear that much you look like an old soul on twitter um and so i don't know what if you're a zoomer or whatnot i don't even know what that means to be honest with you i'm a millennial (laughs) okay i think i'm what one of my probably a baby boomer x no i'm not a boomer (laughs) (laughs) oops um but these zoomers they really have been given everything yeah they've never been spanked They've nope. never known discipline. And 